Just a week or two ago I reviewed Panasonic TV100 and that turned out to be the best travel pocket camera yet. It had 10 times optical zoom paired with 20 megapixels uh, 1 inch type sensor which was responsible for very high image quality. Uh, this here is Panasonic TZ80, the younger brother of TZ100. It features much smaller sensor but has much bigger optical zoom, 30 times. Many other features are similar. Both record 4K video, have really nice touch LCD, electronic viewfinder and offer extensive manual controls. The price is also more attractive. TZ80 retails at 450 US dollars, while TZ100 is around 700. So I guess TZ80 will be more interesting to many photographers. This camera weighs only 280 grams and really fits almost anywhere, making it ideal travel and carry anywhere camera. Overall build quality is ok, but it doesn't look as good as more expensive TZ100, which is made from metal, while TZ80 is entirely plastic. Still, it has well designed rubber grip and non slippery thumb rest on the back that actually makes it easier to hold than TZ100, which is way too slippery. Most buttons are too small, but you will probably get used to them. That is constant problems on cameras small as this one. LCD has 3 inches diagonal and 1 million dots. Viewing angles are perfect and images looks very sharp and detailed on the LCD. It is touch sensitive, but I quickly turned it off. On a camera as small as this one, it was way too often I touched something accidentally. You can also enable touch shutter option, but it's a bit hidden in, in this side menu. I couldn't find it on TZ100 until someone pointed it out in comments on my YouTube review. Electronic viewfinder is the same unit from TZ100 and what I said about it in previous review applies also here. It is very small with just 1.1 million dots and suffers from RGB tearing effect. You can see rainbows when you move your eyeball. Still it is better to have it than not, but I avoided using it as much as I could. I had a hard time deciding whether to make this review based on JPEG or RAW files. Typical buyer of this camera will have no idea what RAW is and how to use it. Even when explained, a prospect of post-processing all images on PC would turn them away. So these are out of camera JPEGs at default settings straight from the box. Nothing special, neutral colors and so-so details to when you zoom in. Sometimes they are destroyed by noise reduction, sometimes pleasantly preserved. Yes, you can get vivid images from camera by messing with various settings, but then if you point the camera at something that already is saturated, for example a flower in the sunlight, final image will be so saturated it will look like you dropped the camera in a bucket of LSD. So I quickly gave up on JPEG and went full raw. Who would have said TZ80 is capable of producing something like this? In hands of an experienced user, this little camera can make some rather impressive looking images. Interestingly, little is gained in terms of details by shooting in raw format and processing images on PC. There are almost no extra details compared to JPEG images. It is obvious noise reduction affects raw files. With normal level of post-processing, noise becomes apparent even at base ISO value. Also, dynamic range is not that great. You can recover some blown highlights, but not a lot, maybe half a stop. Low light performance is not good. ISO 400 is maximum I used. ISO 800 might be usable in some cases, but above that images are a mess, and not even RAW can help you get good results. This is clearly a travel camera for outdoor use in good light. This camera has 30 times optical zoom, covering 24 to 720 mm range equivalent. It is pretty fast to zoom from one extreme to the other. What I like best, the camera always indicates at what focal length equivalent it is zoomed. There is also option to use a step zoom. Let's take a look how much zoom range 30 times optical zoom gives you. This is wide angle shot and this is 100% crop from that image. Maximum telephoto will get you this close, and this is 100% crop from that image. That billboard in the middle is at exactly 2 km distance, that's 1.2 miles. Rather practical optical zoom, I'd say. Sadly, it would be crazy to expect high quality from such lens. As you can see, contrast is crap on maximum telephoto, and the lens also shows the centering. There was some haze in the air in these examples, but even when you take an image at close distance, let's say this chain at around 40 meters distance, image is still soft and full of noise. Corners on wide angle can be very soft. The lens suffers from quite strong chromatic aberrations on all focal lengths, 
and sometimes they are so strong it is hard to remove them. Video offers full manual control and by that I mean exposure, aperture, ISO, focus and there are zebra and peaking features. It records in 4K resolution at 30 frames per second or you can use full HD at 60 or 30 frames per second. Maximum recording time in 4K resolution is 15 minutes and for full HD resolution 30 minutes. Video quality is good in good light as you can see from these examples. Colors are nice and there are plenty details in 4K videos. Sadly it suffers from rolling shutter wobble. I think this example shows it well. You can clearly see how roof tiles seem to wobble. Low light video is a disaster. This was shot at ISO 3200 and there is nothing you could do to make it look better. Noise and noise reduction will completely destroy video and make it practically unusable in my opinion. There is also high speed video mode, 100 frames per second in HD resolution and 200 frames per second in VGA resolution. Right now you can see how they look, pretty neat features but resolution is way too low for modern standards. One thing I need to point out and that concerns zoom range in video mode. In photo mode camera covers 24 to 720 mm but when you record 4K video it is 33 to 990 mm and for full HD it covers 30 to 900 mm. This is because TZ80 does not do full sensor readout in video mode but uses only smaller central part of the sensor. Keep this in mind if video is important to you as you will not be able to get very wide angle videos. Shutter speed ranges from 1 16,000 of a second to 4 seconds. If you like to take long exposure shots from tripod, keep this in mind since 4 seconds is actually not that long. ISO ranges from 80 to 3200. For auto ISO you can select upper limit but not the lowest shutter speed. Also shutter speed in auto ISO is not linked to focal length. Autofocus is very fast, in daylight practically instant, but in low light it still needs a second or two to focus. The camera offers a range of focus point configurations and sizes for you to play with. I preferred using second point which can easily be changed in size to accommodate any needs. Manual focus is easy to control, once you engage it, dial around the lens controls focus. Focus magnification helps you to pinpoint focus and you can select magnification to cover entire frame or just the central part of it. 4K photo mode is something I explained in details in my FZ300 review, this time I will repeat only basic principle. TZ80 records 4K video and then allows you to extract any frame and save it as a JPEG file. This way you effectively get 30 frames per second burst at 8 megapixels, quite usable. Good thing is that uh, TZ80 can take a still image from any video, you don't need to be in 4K photo mode to benefit from it. Post focus is the new function introduced with this camera. The camera records 4K video cycling through all the focus points focusing on everything in the frame. Later you can pick an image with focus on a detail you like best and save it as a separate image. Battery is a lithium unit capable of around 300 shots on a single charge. Standard SD memory cards are supported. Be sure to use ultra high speed free cards in order to record 4K video. Battery is recharged using supplied external adapter, a micro USB cable. Many people find this practical, but external charger would have been better. That way you would be able to charge spare battery while using camera with the first one. Tripod mount is very close to battery card compartment, but it depends on the type of tripod whether you will be able to open it. With the small pocket tripod I have right now, it is possible. Right side has two connectors, micro HDMI output and micro USB used for connecting to PC and charging the battery. Finally Panasonic decided to use standard micro USB instead of that weird proprietary connector on many previous models. Quick menu is the same as on any other Panasonic camera, easy to navigate and filled with most important settings. Main menu is also seen many times, I won't spend your time explaining all of it, it's in the manual. I will just say I am surprised how many advanced options from more expensive cameras found its way down to the TZ80. Playback is fast and easy to use, even with RAW files camera cycles extremely fast through images. Several of the buttons and both dials can be customized to your needs. A good deal of options is offered, yet still the camera doesn't feel too complicated to adjust. As conclusion, I can recommend this camera for basic users. It will serve you nicely and allow you to learn and experiment with all manual controls a camera can have. 
but if you want really good images or video, especially in low light, you will have to buy something else and by else I mean something with bigger sensor. Panasonic TZ100 is visibly ahead in image quality and I think it pays off to spend extra over TZ80. That's about everything for this review, I hope I gave you usable informations. If you still have a question feel free to ask me in the comment section below. If you want to support my blog subscribe to my YouTube channel and if you buy from Amazon use the links uh, below this video. I will get a small percentage from every purchase but you will not pay any more than otherwise. Thanks for watching.